One of the most popular verses in all the Bible is Hebrews chapter 11. It's what's known as the Hall of Faith. It's got some of the most iconic Sunday school characters. I mean, we read into there, I mean, we see people like Abel, who made a faith sacrifice and offering that was accepted to God. We see people like Abraham and Sarah, who walked with God, and through faith, they had a child at 99 years of age. You know, that's got to take a lot of faith, amen? And we see people like Noah, and we see people like, like Samuel, and we see people like David, and we see people like Moses. And right there in the middle of the hall of faith, there is a prostitute. All of these people are like, I want to be like them. And then all of a sudden, Rahab shows up, and you're like, what do I do with this? And here's, here's the reason why, why, why Rahab was included in that hall of faith is because she understood what the true meaning of faith really was. She understood the, the, the message of faith, the meaning of faith. Here's, here's what it says. I'll read it. In, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 31, by faith, Rahab the prostitute, she did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. In the hall of faith, there is a prostitute because she understood what faith truly means. You know, in our day, we have condensed faith down to an idea. We've condensed faith down to simply what you know. We've condensed faith down to just a set of facts. We've condensed faith down to maybe even just a decision that you made when you were 10 years old. We say, well, I have faith. I bet you nine out of 10 people that you ask, if you were to go walk around Parkdale Mall, like, hey, are you a Christian? Nine out of 10 people would say, yeah, absolutely. Well, how do you know that you're a Christian? Well, because when I was a kid, I was raised in the church and you know, I own a Bible somewhere in my house and you know, my grandparents were Christians and you know, I used to go to church and maybe I go on Christmas and Easter and they would say, yes, I am a Christian because I have faith. But if you were to follow that person around, let's say 24 hours, let me ask you, do you think that faith would be made evident? Do you think that faith would really be on display? See, we've condensed faith down to just head knowledge. We've convinced faith down to just something that you profess. But faith is not just what you profess. Faith is also what you practice. It's not just what you know, but it's also the way that you live your life. Rahab, she knew who God was, and then it was evident by her actions. If you're taking notes, write this down. Faith is belief in action. You gotta put your faith to work. Faith is belief that has also been acted upon. See, listen, I love my wife, Ashley. After 15 years, I hope I know her better than anybody else in this room. And I know so much about her life. I know what her favorite food is. I know what her favorite restaurants are. I know what her favorite ice cream is. I know what her favorite flowers are. And I know all of the buttons to press when I wanna make her mad. I know all of those things. But let's say I never do those things for her. Let's say whenever I'm out buying groceries, I don't pick up her favorite foods or I don't pick up the, 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 the organic diet that she's currently on. I come back with nothing but things that I want. Chicken wings and pizza and Whataburger jalapeno ranch. And she's like, I can't eat any of this stuff. What if I never take her on a date? What if I never tell her I love her and all I do is just press all the buttons in her life? What, what would happen? You would come to the conclusion that I probably didn't love this girl. It's the same way when it comes to our faith. When it comes to love, we have a, a saying that love is not just what you say, love is also what you do. It's the same thing when it comes down to our faith. That faith isn't just what you say, it's also what you do. Don't just tell me you have faith, show me you have faith, because faith is belief in action. What would have happened if Rahab would have said, I know that your God is the God of the Bible, but I am not going to rescue you. I am not gonna drop this cord down the window. I am not gonna bring you to my roof. I am not gonna do all those things. She would have perished just along with everybody else. Because faith is not just what you say. Faith is how you live your life. Faith is belief in action. So here, here's what I wanna do. Because there is this confusion around the subject of faith, let me go ahead and give you seven ways Rahab demonstrates real faith. The, the, the first thing is this, is that real faith requires risk. 
I love what Pastor Erwin McManus says from Mosaic Church. He says, another way to spell faith is R-I-S-K. It's going to take risk. It's going to have you to step out of your comfort zones and do something that you normally wouldn't do. There is going to be a risk involved. Rahab here, she is risking her life because faith takes risk. If you're always just standing on the sidelines and you never get in the game, you're never going to be able to experience the faith that God has for you. Faith requires risk. Number two, faith is not perfect. Rahab lied. That's a weird way to show your faith. But yet, even though her faith was not perfect, her faith wasn't a perfect God. And there may be times and seasons where you're feeling like, I'm going to fail. I'm not going to get this right. That's okay. As long as you put your faith in a perfect God and not in your own schemes and understandings of yourself. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways. And Rahab did the best that she could. In all of her ways, she acknowledged the Lord. And because of that, she was a woman of faith. Faith is not perfect, but it does place its faith in a perfect God. The third thing we see is this, is that faith, faith requires trust. She had to trust and believe that these men weren't going to treat her like all the other men have treated her. She had to believe, okay, I have been abused, I have been raped, I have been beaten, I have been taken advantage of, and now these men come to me? Are they going to do the same thing to me? Do you imagine the anxiety and the fear that might be inside of her? And yet still, she put her trust because that was an act of her faith. And here's what we see is this. The men said, I'm going to go and we're going to come back for you. She had to trust that they were going to keep their word to him. But this is the same thing that we see when it comes to following after Jesus. We have to trust and believe that he will be good to us, that he will love us, that he is safe for us, that he wants the best for us, and that one day he's coming back for us too. It's all about this trust. Also, faith grows over time. What we see is this, is it starts off with just a little bit of faith. I have heard. And then it moves to, well, now I know. And her faith grows when she acts upon that faith. And then she is delivered and she is saved. There is a progression that is taking place over the course of the chapter. You are watching her moment by moment use the little faith she has. And as she uses it, it grows. And then it grows again. And then it grows again. Until by the end of the chapter, she is delivered. Faith grows over time. I I I meet people, they're like, I just wish that I could have faith. You know how you get more faith? You use the faith you already have. My favorite Bible verse is Mark 4, 24. With the measure you use, it will be measured unto you. The one who has, more will be given. The one who has not, even what they have will be taken away from them. And so if you use your faith, God will give you more faith. But if you don't use your faith, eventually it will shrivel up and die and you'll be left with nothing. She has to walk out, and she has to live by, and she has to step out with the little faith that she has. If you want to grow in your faith, just use the faith that you got. And the more you use it, the more faith God is going to give to you, the more answers to prayers you're going to see, the more people you're going to see saved, the more miracles you're going to see in your life, the more provision you're going to see in your life, the deeper your trust is going to grow with God if you just use the faith that you have. I was talking with somebody, and they were sharing a story about their friend who really wants to become a Christian, but they're just not there. And they're just like, I don't have the faith. Well, if you want to, the want to's there. So why don't you take the step, and I believe that God will meet you in that place. Just use the little bit of faith that you have. When we see the man with the demonic boy of the epilepsy in the book of Mark, what does it say? I believe, but help my unbelief. And it was that prayer of faith that saw his son be healed. Faith grows over time. The next thing we see is that faith, faith obeys. She knew the right thing to do and she acted upon that. Faith is belief in action. And another thing we see is that faith is patient. It took her 24 verses to see her deliverance come. She started off in faith, will you rescue me and my my family? And they said yes. And not only did it take 24 verses, but it also took her three entire days. She had to be patient with that. God said it, I believe it, I'm not going to freak out because I trust and believe in him. 
And even if it takes me 24 verses, even if it takes me three days, even if it takes me 30 years, I'm going to be patient because I believe that God has good for me. I believe it. I trust it. And she is acting upon the faith that she has. And she's being patient. I mean, she's not like, save me now. Let's jump through this window. It's not what she did. She said, I'll wait on you because I believe. And she operated in faith. And the, the next thing as we see is this, is that faith takes work. Faith requires work. Like there's some things that you're going to have to do if you want to live by faith. You can't just be like, God, I'm just going to sit back here and, you know, trust that all things are according to your will. No, no. There's some things that you're going to have to do in your life as well. Faith requires work. Right now, some of your brains are exploding. You're like, I thought we were saved by grace through faith, not by works. Byron, it sounds to me like you're getting dangerously close to teaching a works-based theology. It sounds very close. I thought, like, I just bowed my head, prayed a prayer, and I just get to do whatever I want for the rest of my life. That, that's actually not, not true. You're like, but it sounds to me like you're getting dangerously close to a works-based theology. You say that there's some things that I have to do? Yes. So I got a verse. James chapter 2. You see that a person is justified, that word saved, imputed, justified. The judge drops the gavel, not guilty. Why? By their works and not by faith alone. And the same way was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by her works when she received the messengers sent out by them another way. For the body apart from the spirit is dead. So also faith apart from works is dead. Don't just tell me you have faith. Show me your faith. Don't just say, I know. Say, I am living it out in my life. Don't just give me some facts. I can tell you the intertestamental period between Malachi and the book of Matthew. I understand what, 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 what penal substitutionary atonement means. I can give you the 12 different reasons that the cross was applied. I can explain to you all the pneumatical hermeneutics that are taking place in the Old Testament. I don't care how much you know if I don't see it in your life. Faith requires work. And if you want your faith to work, here's what you do. You put your faith to work. Start loving people. Start blessing people. Start tithing. Start going out of your way. Listen to other people's stories. Start living by holiness and godliness in your life and watch your faith continue to grow. By faith, Rahab was justified because she hid the spies. As a church, we got things to do. We got people to love. We got money to give. We got missionaries to send. We got people to baptize. Come on. It's not time for us to sit on the sidelines. It's time for us to get up, get in the game, and start loving some people because people matter to us because they matter to God. Live out your faith. Faith is belief in action. My, my challenge for every single one of us today is to do this. Every single day this week, do one thing that requires faith. 